Hi, I'm Dr. Hannah Hamlin, and today I'm going to talk about five tips I want to share with you about the new Freestyle Libre 3 Plus. We're going to talk about some of the differences and some tips that I've learned about wearing the Freestyle Libre in general. So the first big difference between the Freestyle Libre uh, 2 or the Freestyle Libre 3 and the Freestyle Libre 3 Plus is that it can be um, worn a little bit longer. So the sensor now lasts up to 15 days before it was 14 days which makes sense for prescriptions, right? If we're gonna try and do um, two a month, it'll fit most months a lot better. Um, what really changes this though, is that the Freestyle Libre 3 Plus is compatible with some of the automated insulin delivery integration. So some of the pumps that have algorithms like Beta Bionics, the Islet Bionic Pancreas, and uh, the T-Slim Moby, which I just made another video about, so it's really nice to see that Freestyle Libre is kind of in the game and connected with insulin pumps. It just gives us more options depending on our insurance and what we can get covered. The other thing about the Freestyle Libre 3 Plus is that the age range that it's eligible for has changed and it can now be used on kids as young as two years old. Again, that's really nice because I think we're expanding coverage um, and the Freestyle Libre for a lot of people on certain plans ends up being more affordable than the Dexcom and really just depending on kind of how insurance coverage works. Um, the Freestyle Libre 3, if you have a prescription, the cash price is also significantly lower than um, the Dexcom or the other continuous glucose monitors on the market. So that's another pro. The design of the Freestyle Libre 3 Plus and the Freestyle Libre 3 is essentially looks exactly the same, hasn't really changed in the way that it looks, which is nice. It's that small size that looks like kind of two pennies stacked on top of each other. The other thing I want to mention, um, this is kind of my last tip of Freestyle Libre, is that I've noticed when compared to years of wearing the Dexcom, uh, is that I tend to have more compression lows, specifically when I wear the Freestyle Libre on my arms. Um, this is something, a compression low, if you haven't heard this term before, this is something that can happen at night or if you're napping or resting or watching a movie, is that if you're laying on the part of your body where the sensor is and it kind of gets squished, for lack of a better term there's a lot of pressure around it based on how you're laying then what can happen is you don't get the the readings the same you don't get the same kind of interstitial fluid movement um, and it can make it look like you're very low because it's not reading accurately um, often on a graph this is pretty easy to recognize it takes some learning but you can kind of see a, a regular trend happening and then all of a sudden there's a dot that's kind of in that low range that you can see moving along and then you get up and then the graph kind of stops. So it's not a cohesive graph where it would look like you were dropping over time. Instead, it's pretty kind of disconjointed um, in the line of the graph. And so that's a one way to know that, that you may be having a compression low. If you see those, um, I, often you'll get an alarm for them because your, your body will be recognizing you as below your threshold most of the time, that's how it works for me. Um, I always, if I'm concerned about a compression low, I always do a finger check just to double check it. Uh, and then I'll kind of know where that is. I've also learned that placement of the Freestyle Libre 3 um, makes a difference for me. If I wear it on the outside of my shoulder versus the back of my arm, I tend to have a lot more compression lows on the, the kind of outside of my shoulder where I would be laying on my side and it would get uh, squished. So that's something to think about. Um, a lot of people, I I know find that they think they're having a lot of overnight lows we then do some teaching about compression lows and they come back to me and they say oh actually I, I was having compression lows I didn't know what that was at the time and it can be kind of confusing because if you treat that low and you're not actually low then you'll end up higher uh, and it just makes your data a lot harder to interpret if you're not aware that that's what's going on so this is something I've seen compression lows absolutely happen in the other sensors definitely have happened to me many times with Dexcom as well but for me specifically, I've noticed that Freestyle Libre has them more frequently depending on my placement. So just something to think about. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know. If you like this and you want other videos about type 1 diabetes or diabetes technology or really mindset and medicine, that's the intention of this channel, please subscribe. That would mean a whole lot to me. And thanks for sticking till the end.